this video isn't really about the bloke behind me, but there is a reason I put him up there. This chap is the author of one of the um, foremost manuals on psychological warfare ever written. It's still used, although some of the stuff in it is, of course, naturally dated. His name is Paul Myron Anthony Leinbugger. If you look him up, you'll find he also has a pen name of Cordwain and Smith. He was rather good at sort of using psychological themes in his work, and that book on psychological warfare tells you how to manipulate people in times of war. And he would know well how to do it. He was a colonel in the US military intelligence division. Now, as I say, this isn't particularly about him, but earlier today we had Mr. Simon Webb going on about the terms AD and BC and contending it was all because of the naughty Muslims they were changed. We're going to thoroughly debunk that debunking in a minute because it's absolutely bollocks and I'm not going to mince words on it. Simon is just churning out anti-Muslim screed after screed after screed at the minute. Let's ch debunk that rubbish, shall we? Here we have an article from 2005 from America. And I'm going to read it out. Albany, New York, in a world encouraged to embrace differences, BC and AD are increasingly finding themselves on the wrong end of the religious sensitivity meter. This was from the Associated Press, by the way, by a gentleman called Michael Gormley. Educated historians say schools from North America to Australia have been changing the terms before Christ, before Common Era, and Anno Domini, Latin for Year of the Lord to Common Era. In short, they're referred to as BCE and CE. The change has stoked the ire of Christian conservatives and some religious leaders who view it as an attack on a social political order that has been in place for centuries. Ironically, for more than a century, Hebrew lessons have used BCE and CE, with CE sometimes refused referring to Christian era. That begs the question, can old and new coexist in harmony or must one get way to the other to reflect changing times and era? The terms BC and AD have clear Catholic roots. That's a bit more complicated than it may seem, by the way, but I'll get back to that. Dionysius Exegus, an abbot in Rome, and I'll see, and you'll see why when I get back to Dionysius, devised them as a way to determine the date for Easter for Pope St. John I. The terms were continued under the Gregorian calendar. Though most calendars are based on an epoch a person, BC and AD have always presented a particular problem for this story. There is no year zero. Yes, that is a major problem with them and a major annoyance. When Jews and Muslims have to put Christ in the middle of our calendar, that's difficult for us, said Stephen Brown, Dean of the William Davison Graduate School of Jewish Education. Not, presumably notable for its huge Muslim student body, at the Jewish Theological Seminary in New York City. They are hard for non-Jews because they assume a centrality of Jesus. It's not a sensitive, but it's not sensitive my religious sensibilities. The new terms were introduced by academics in the 1990s in public elementaries and high school classrooms. I pointed out repeatedly that this was an American conflict over this that had spilled out from American academia into education in America and drifted over the ocean. Now, somebody asked me what was used then before AD and BC. You had a number of rather strange dating systems. Some of them are rather weird. Some of them are still used in some places. This one, the Year of the Martyrs, is still used in the Church of Alexandria, but it's something most people have never heard of. The Year of the Martyrs, Anno Martyrum, was also known as the Diocletian Era, is a method of numbering years based on the reign of Roman Emperor Diocletian. Dionysius didn't want to use this, but Diocletian is regarded as a persecutor of, Jew, of Christians historically, so obviously he wasn't too keen on using it, but it is still used occasionally. Here's Dionysius himself, Dionysius Exegus, canonist. Now, Dionysius is from the what would today be the Eastern Church, and he's venerated as saint in the Byzantian tradition and Eastern Orthodoxy, but not in Roman Catholicism, although people are well aware who he is if they go and have a quick wander about and look at what where AD and BC came from as terms. Although BC would actually be better rendered in Latin as anti-Christian, before Christ. 
Dionysus Exegus flourished 6th century AD, celebrated 6th century canonist who is considered the inventor of the Christian calendar, the use of which spread through the employment of his new Easter tables. The 6th century historian Cassidorius calls him a monk, but tradition refers to him as an abbot. It's probably a bit blurry in the, with these, some of these guys as the rules as to what was a monk or an abbot or rules of life for monks and abbots were not exactly clear cut at this point. He arrived in Rome about the time of the death, 496, of Pope St. Gelasius I, a man whose name has always reminded me for some reason of ice cream, who had summoned him to organise the pontifical archives. Now, this is dry stuff unless you have the interest in this sort of stuff I have. But it does serve to show there were other systems of dating before and after. It does also serve to show that it wasn't naughty Muslims who influenced all this and all this change, and that it was there and growing long before that. Here's another sort of um, system of county that was used, Aburb Conditia from the founding of the city. This was used from the traditional founding of Rome. There are loads of others if you look them up. Now, Simon, if you're going to keep knocking out this stuff that sort of is it's intending to tell simplified versions of history, it's getting quite silly at this point. And that the reason I put Mr. Smith's name and book up at the top back is one, Mr. Smith was a noted academic, and two, anyone reading it will soon learn how psychological warfare of this stuff works and how you play with people's heads to accomplish this sort of thing and create images of the enemy, which is exactly what's going on there constantly, every day, non-stop.